Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ross Bailey here, friendly product specialist, and we're here for another learning with line six. Um, let's get the awkward bit out of the way and make sure the levels are cool. So hopefully you can hear my voice and hopefully you can hear the guitar. <laughs> Hopefully the levels are all good and I'll fill for a minute while I wait for someone to say, yeah, we're all good or something's wrong um, and fill that little delay. Uh, looks like we've got some people hanging here tonight. Evening, everybody. Uh, yeah, yes, Duke, it should be a good one. Uh, we'll see. Um, uh, we're going to have some fun and we're going to look at some Josh Smith tones. Thank you, Carl. Right. Let's get cracking. So, yes. Josh Smith, um, incredible guitar player, incredible tone, um, and actually a little bit more housekeeping uh, before we go. 3.5 firmware is out. If you did not know, um, yeah, 3.5 new firmware is out. It's awesome. Some amazing new stuff in there. Uh, most notably, the cabs. Uh, we're calling it the cab update. Uh, we're going to use a couple of bits from 3.5 tonight. Um, and I'll make sure I upload this tone as well uh, to custom tone. I'll post the link so you can go and check it out. Um, but yeah, if you haven't got 3.5, go get it. It's incredible. Sounds amazing. Some really cool new stuff in there. So go and check it out. So, Josh Smith. Um, I've followed Josh for a little while now. Um, and I like to try and get some of these artist tones as close as I can. Uh, this was kind of a tough one because it's... Um, some of the stuff he uses we don't have uh, as models within Helix so you'll see I've substituted some stuff to try and get close to that um, and I'm going to do a live stream on that at some point in the near future uh, where you just kind of go for different models and get some legendary tones for things that aren't necessarily in there and it's maybe just a little bit of research and a little bit of know-how um, and do what I've done with this one and get as close as you can and still make it sound awesome. So, um, do 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 Constantine. Uh, yes, this tone is including the 3.5 cabs. Um, and we'll go through, we'll show you kind of each independent thing um, and what I've done with them. And hopefully, um, <laughs> sorry, I've got to show this. Uh, I nearly cried when I tried the new cabs. Duke, don't, don't cry, mate. Just just enjoy them. Uh, you're very, very welcome. Enjoy and have fun. Um, yeah, some, uh, some really cool stuff in there. Right. Let's get cracking. So um, so this is what the preset looks like. Um, oh, we've got some angry faces. Yeah. I don't know why people are angry. Um, right. So here's the run through. Um, so we've got guitar going in. Um, let me show you the guitar, by the way. There we go. Right, so first and foremost, so Josh's main uh, guitar uh, has been for many, many years a Chapin T-Bird, apparently, um, hand-built kind of tele-style thing. Um, I have my incredible Yamaha 1611 Mike Stern model. Um, pretty much stock. I've put a Duncan Fat Cat in the neck. Um, Obviously, Josh uses a single coil in the neck. Technically, P90 is a single coil, but yeah, whatever. Um, so, but far from the correct pickups, but it sounds pretty cool. And then for one particular effect, he uses a Strat kind of thing. So I have my trusty Pacifica 612V, uh, bare knuckle trigger pickups in there. Very, very far from kind of vintage um strap pickups but you'll get the idea but that really is for just for one specific effect so right stop rabbiting here we go um right so signal chain for this um you see it's kind of there's a bunch of different stuff in there and i've had to be a little bit cute um to to do what i want to do with this but we'll uh yeah we'll we'll have a go so first up we have a, a wah. He doesn't use a wah that much, but it's in there. So I've used the weeper. I've tweaked the low um, to give it a little bit more low in there. Um, so when I'm talking about substituting things, this is one of them. So uh, Josh has kind of this uh, clean octave thing, uh, which again for years he was using the love pedal, believe, 
Uh, more recently, he's been using a Mythos. I can't remember the name of the pedal, um, but it's a Mythos thing. And it's essentially kind of a clean um, uh, Octavia. So it's an Octavia kind of without the fuzz, but whenever I've heard it, it has a little bit of dirt on there. So the closest I could find, I was using an Octavia uh, initially with uh, the fuzz all the way down, and it was just a little bit too gnarly. Uh, so 3.5, we have the Vital Distortion, and that kind of does that thing. You'll see the gain's really low, level's up high, um, and, and that actually does a really good impression of, uh, of that kind of thing. Uh, next up, uh, so Josh used a bunch of different fuzzers over the years. Uh, they need to be loud. Uh, and they need to be beefy and um, the kind of largely sort of fuzz face based as far as I can tell uh, somewhere between a fuzz face and a tone bender um, and I've ended up actually with one of the legacy uh, pedals in here which is the facial fuzz and that does a really good job it gets plenty of loud I can tweak uh, the tone a little bit more than say a fuzz face or something else and that does a great job for that now um, Josh's main sound, if you've ever watched any of his stuff, uh, rig rundowns, or listened to anything he's done, his main sound, um, is, uh, his main kind of drive sound, I guess, he uses a, a, something called a Love Pedal Chula, um, which is two COT50 pedals, I believe, in one. Um, we don't have that model in here. The closest I can get or I can find is the Top, Se top Secret OD, uh, one of Ben's pedals. Now, I actually have a Tula hiding back there, um, and this is pretty close. It, again, it does that thing very, very well, so quite happy with how that turned out. Um, we've got the Screamer, again, one of the legacy ones, um, the, the 8i8 model in there, um, the, the Stupor OD, the, the kind of Tube Screamer-based pedals. None of them quite did it. Turned on the Screamer uh, in the legacy section, absolutely bang on perfect so really happy with that uh, then we go into the compulsive drive uh, he does tend to have some kind of Marshall in a box pedal on the board um, again another love pedal uh, thing that uses the purple plexi I believe very loud um, but essentially Marshall in a box so I've thrown that in there as well uh, now I put the harmonic tremolo in there the kind of modulation effects he uses um, very, he does a ton of different sessions. A couple of the pedal sort of board rundowns I've watched him do. Uh, he does use kind of a tremolo or harmonic tremolo, so I've thrown that in just for fun, really. Uh, we've got a chorus in there as well, again, just because why not? So I've got two delays in parallel here. We've got a transistor tape, and then we have the mod chorus echo. Transistor tape set for a slapback. Um, again, part of his main sound, it's essentially the Tula and um, actually a TC flashback. So we've gone with the transistor tape uh, to use with the flashback. And then the mod chorus echo is just kind of a vibey thing that we've got in there. And we've got a rotary. Um, now this was kind of a tough one to get this about right with the levels and everything. Um, but again, I think it sounds pretty good. And then we, you see we split into two amps. So Josh always uses two amps. He uses a Voxy kind of thing and he uses a Fender kind of thing. Um, generally his main rig is a two Morgan uh, amps sort of custom designed for him but when he's out touring and he's got to use various kind of things on the road you're generally seeing with something Fendery and something Voxy so for the two amps we've gone with the US Princess and we've gone with the A30 Fawn normal channel um, and that kind of again does a pretty decent job you see these are on two separate paths and I'm panning them left and right so if you're listening on headphones or you're listening in stereo you'll get that full effect and then we've got spring reverb in there as well just um on the uh, the us princess side so on the cabs we've got the 112 actually the cali extension cab um actually sounded a, a lot more right to me um and you'll see the new cab models in here so with the 47 uh condenser uh fet in there that position and then on the a30 the 212 bluebell pretty much stock uh, but i've changed it for the 84 ribbon and I think that's there. That was a lot of talking. Um, should we get cracking? Right. Uh, no questions. Marvellous. Here we go. Right. So let's listen to some sounds. So straight up. <coughs> excuse me. Drinky booze. 
straight up clean sound. <laughs> So that's just the two amps uh, with a reverb on the US Princess. Now, just to show you what those sound like individually, let's turn the, uh, the A30 down. So this is the US Princess on its own. Turn this up a little bit in the room. Really sweet sound on its own. Let's turn that down and let's turn the A30 up. And you combine the two, it sounds like that. Snapped a string then. Um, do do do. Uh, Alan, uh, this patch will be available to download, um, and I always forget to upload it, but I will upload it and then post a link for you um, on Facebook and YouTube. Ah, uh, oh, cheers, Duke. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. So. <laughs> So they're the two together, um, and the theory behind that is the kind of um, the the US Princess, uh, or if you're using any kind of Fendery bass amp, that's going to give you the kind of nice juicy low end and the clear top, and then the kind of more voxy side, uh, in this case the A30, that's going to fill in those mids, so you get this big wide frequency spectrum. Um, they're right on the edge of breakup, like right on the edge, so you can play clean. <laughs> It's going to be, by the way, this is going to be a really terrible half hour or so of faux bluesy jazz licks, um, me attempting to sound something in the realm of Josh Smith, which is a stupid idea, but we'll have a go. So, so that's the kind of bass tone, a little bit of reverb on the princess, and then if we put the transistor tape on, um, let's go back to that. So this is the slap back, so this is kind of, I guess, 90% of his sound. <laughs> Um, so just nice clean sound with a bit of slap back. So like I said earlier, most of the time, um, he says like 99% of the time or something, you're going to hear his main sound of the two amps with the slapback and the love pedal tuler. Like I say, I don't have a tuler model, but I've got all the top secret of D, um, and it's very loud. The tuler itself as a pedal is super loud as a boost. So you want some kind of high headroom, so. And you're gonna hear this get a lot louder. is it, it, it's really smashing the front and the amps it's giving you a little bit of grit making those work but also um, it's super dynamic so you can dig in but you can clean it up as well Basically, the Josh Smith sound. Give or take a little bit. Excuse the playing, obviously. Um, but that's um, that's pretty much it. 
Um, do do John says sounds great. Good, good, good. Um, so there you are. That's most of Josh Smith's stuff, and we can probably kind of end the stream there, but we won't. So um, let's go into a couple of other things. Uh, one effect that uses absolutely tons is the rotary. So I've gone with a one, two, two. Um, <clears throat> originally, I actually separated the cabs and assigned a foot switch to turn the cabs off and then turn the rotary on uh, with the amps, both amps going in. Um, but I kind of changed my mind because he doesn't do that. He uses, uh, I believe it's an H9, even tight H9 to give him his rotary thing. And this is somewhere kind of close, I think. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so when you download the preset, uh, you'll want the in Stonebox mode. You'll want the switches set to ten. Stonebox is assigned basically everything in here. And on one of the switches, uh, I've assigned the speed. So, so the default is fast. Press the speed button, and it goes nice and slow. Back to fast. Fat for to this. I don't know where I went then. But that's the rotary effect. Um, let's do the uh, kind of vibey delay real quick. Again, not something he uses a lot, uh, kind of in his own stuff, I believe. But just really beautiful. Something like that. So really nice and pretty. Um, quickly, the harmonic tremolo sounds like that. It's kind of cool. Um, I can't remember why I put the chorus in there, but it's in there. Probably because 80s. I'll stop that immediately. So, um, on with some fun stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Peter, I can't wait to get my hands on the preset. Marvelous. It will be up as soon as I can. I was going to say, as soon as I can get it up. Um, as soon as I finish this. I will upload it and post the link. There we go. Right. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting, I guess. Um, so the vital distortion, um, one of the new ones for 3.5. So go and check that out. So like I said earlier, ooh, oh, Ross, turn your email off. Amateur. Um, uh, I needed that kind of clean octave thing, and it's 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 kind of like a ring modulator as well sort of vibe and when you hear him play this basically on any kind of rig rundown he does he'll add this effect um and it, it, it's kind of pretty gnarly so that's just clean and then
But the Octavia, the Tiger Bray Octavia model, it was really sharp and nasty. It really only works with the volume down a little bit, neck pick up and kind of up the 12th fret. But you can do that kind of thing that the Love Pedal Believe does. It's a little bit spitty. Um, so that works really well for that. And then the fuzz. So that's probably just blown your ears out because it's super loud in here. But I've tried to kind of recreate what he does live. Um, so yeah, if you've ever stepped on a fuzz face or a big muff or something like that when you're gigging and you've got the same kind of level as your basic core clean sound, you will vanish. It needs to be so much louder and push so much air to kind of get over and above the band. So that's something you'll see uh, with Josh and believe is current. Um, he has a signature fuzz pedal called Myriad uh, with Vemaram. That's the company I'm looking for, and it's really, really loud, and some really cool stuff in there. And this does that thing, so like I say, it's just sort of very, very loud, obnoxious. Uh, but big and thick. So you can actually hear that kind of slap back, because the, the fuzz is just smashing the front of those amps so hard. Um, they're crunching up a little bit and that um, that little kind of slapback delay you can hear that happening in there as well um, and then the final pedal in here oh no no we have the screamer I'll swap guitars for that real quick um, so you can hear that the compulsive draw like I say for kind of sessions or when he just needs to get over absolutely everyone else um, he has kind of a Marshall in the box style pedal uh, which he's varied uh, he's using, I forget the name of the one, but the one MIDI and all the sliders and everything. Chase Bliss, I believe. Um, he's using that, which does a ton of different stuff. Um, he was using the Purple Plexi before that. Um, I've gone with the Compulsive Drive because it's pretty close. Uh, so, Clean Signal. And then with the Compulsive Drive. It kind of does that. It cleans up great. Just big, thick, kind of juicy gain in there. Um, and then finally, the screamer. Uh, give me two seconds. So this. Um, the pedal he was using for, uh, uh, I think he still uses, uh, was the King Tone Duelist, but only the heavy hand side. I want to say the heavy hand side um, for kind of the, the screamery kind of. Um, and it, it, he's kind of looking for the Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of vibe. Maybe I'll do a Steve Ray Vaughan tone. I like making things difficult for myself. So, um, so we've got single chords. It's the closest thing um, I have currently. Make sure we've got no questions. Uh, do, 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 do. No, we are good. So with the Screamer, uh, like I said, I've gone with the Legacy. Um, that seems to work really, really well. Um, the, uh, the Duelist is a kind of a heavily modified uh, version of a tube screamer and a blues breaker. This does a great job. Um, oh dear. I think that 
Americana works pretty well. Um, it's doing that little green box thing. Um, and just the, uh, a lot more tweakable than the 808 model or the Stupor OD. Uh, anything that's kind of little green overdrive pedal box sort of model. Um, so I like that a lot. And I think we're good. Uh, the warp is is kind of cool. Um, so what you said about Waz, he kind of likes that big sweep. Uh, he wants to get the kind of funk on. Um, as well as the car chase stuff. So that sort of does that pretty well. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Alan says, crazy question. Uh, what do you set the output big volume knob on the Helix at? Um, Alan, that is not a crazy question at all. Uh, currently, I am at uh, half past two. Um, but kind of, it will vary, I guess, depending on what you're going into. If you're running into the front end of an amp, depending on how you got your output set. I'm just coming out of the jack outs uh, into my little interface here, which is another Helix because I'm greedy. And it, yeah, I, I don't think there's any kind of hard and fast rules. I've had it at various points, depending on what gig I'm doing, uh, what PA system I'm using, whether I'm going into an amp or a power amp or full cable method. So. Um, just kind of experiment, really. Um, Emidial, Emidial. I apologize, apologize if I've slaughtered that. Uh, the heavy hand is the booze breaker, tube screamer is the string singer. There you go, string singer. So, yeah, the screamer model, legacy screamer model in Helix does a pretty good job of that. Um, uh, do do uh, okay. Uh, it's here. Some people say uh, regarding the volume knob, put it to a hundred percent or turn it off. I'm running just into PA speakers. Um, yeah, sure. If you are really cool and you've got a great engineer, monitor engineer, front of house engineer, or your presets are set um, and everything is wicked, yeah, absolutely turn it off. Set it a hundred percent. Just you know, leave it. For me personally, maybe just because of the band I'm in, um, there's a lot of dynamics for play, a lot of different stuff. So I'm constantly kind of riding the volume control, uh, be that a volume pedal or the master volume control. And I, I use a combination of the volume control, uh, the, the main big knob volume control, uh, volume pedal, um, and an extra boost as well. So I've got various ways of changing the actual level, largely because a lot of the time we do around sound, even if we've got a front of house engineer, it's someone that we don't necessarily know. So I just like to have control over boosting solos or um, any kind of dynamics within the band. Suddenly, Andy, our drummer wants to hit a lot harder. Everyone needs to get a little bit louder. So that's generally what I do. If you're cool and everything just works, set at 100%, I just like a little bit of kind of wiggle room personally. So yeah, there's no hard and fast rules. Uh, flexibility on stage with the volume. Yes, cool. There you go. So that is kind of it. Um, it's a it's a great tone. There's a load of cool stuff in there. You can absolutely make it your own. Uh, with the uh, with the first thing. Uh, <laughs> He can put that kind of octave thing on the first to get more of an Octavian. Uh, with his kind of Chula, in this case, Top Secret OD. So a lot of different sounds with that and some really kind of gnarly sort of sounds as well. Um, so there we go. That's kind of about it for this preset. Um, I'll upload it to Custom Tone and I'll make sure the link gets posted for you. Um, so you can download for free, have a mess around. Um, it's a starting point. 
your guitar is going to sound different, but you know, go for your life, change whatever you want to change. It's entirely up to you. Have fun with it. Um, and Alan says, um, <laughs> this is a good question. What do I think about the new 3.5 update? Yes, I am biased, um, but honestly, it's so cool. Um, I've been a big kind of user of the stock cabs for a long time. Um, went down the IR rabbit hole and got very bored and tired very quickly after spending a ton of money. Um, so I went back to the stock cabs and went, these are actually really awesome um, and more versatile than the IRs I was using. Um, I didn't have to kind of scroll through and select a ton of different stuff. I could get the sound quickly and easily. I've kind of talked about that before in the past. Uh, the new cabs, oh, absolutely incredible. Not least with some of the new amps as well. Um, the Invective is great. Uh, the Sun model is absolutely killer. So, yeah, I've I've kind of messed around with it. I've not gone super super deep with this yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's great. If you don't have 3.5, go get it. Follow the instructions, please. I'm seeing a bunch of posts uh, with people struggling. Just follow the instructions. Make sure you back up. Make sure you pay attention to HX Edit or the up data, uh, whichever you're using. Uh, but go get it. It's it's really really awesome. Um, uh, I've changed seen great. Yes, absolutely, Alan. Um, it it's just so much fun. We're going to do more stuff on 3.5 in the coming weeks. Um, so as we kind of go through it, we'll uh, we'll pick some of the new stuff and have a play. But in the meantime, go get it, have some fun. Um, I'll post the link to this preset shortly so you can download this and have some fun. Um, the moral of the story is go and have some fun. I hope you're all safe and well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we've got another one of these um, uh, same place, probably a different time next week. Uh, we have to move it to Friday this week, but it will be regular time Thursday uh, next week, I believe. With our, uh, I think we've got Tony up next week. Um, but tune in, more great stuff. Thank you so much, and we will see you again. Take care.